So on to our first guest, Ben Guyvers, Senior Cre uh, Creative Relations Manager at Dolby. Ben will now provide you an overview of the intricate Dolby Atmos ecosystem, as well as some of its future developments. Hello, Ben. Hello, Mark. Thank you very much for that introduction. And thank you to AES, an organization that we work very closely with throughout the year. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, have some slides to present just to kind of illustrate some different pieces of the ecosystem that we get a lot of questions about and then we're doing a lot of work in the community to educate on. So if you could just give me a moment here, I will share my screen and Mark, help me out here to make sure that uh, what we're seeing looks correct. Not a problem. Um, stand by. And of course, it is not working, of course. Just one moment. So. <laughs> All right. Yes, you're good, my friend. All right. So thank you once again uh, for having me here. Um, I wanted to share a bit about the music ecosystem, but I wanted to share that the team I'm on, the Dolby Music Partnerships team, um, we do a lot of work in terms of technical enablement and support of the creative community. So what I'm not gonna do today is share creative workflow information and demonstrations with you. We have amazing experts like Brad here that are fantastic at doing that. But uh, what I would like to do is share how kind of all of these pieces fit together. So my team's role is making sure that you've got the tools and the resources to do the amazing work that you do out there. And in many cases, it's about connecting the dots between the content creators and the other pieces of the music ecosystem. So that could could be stu um, studios, labels, distributors, uh, services and devices. Um, and all the way throughout that ecosystem, our team, which is led by Christine Thomas, uh, does a lot of work to help make sure that you are able to get where you need to go or want to go. So um, I also host a monthly community session that if you want to check out, go to Adobe's YouTube channel or our pro site, and you can check that out as well. We love to feature mix and mastering engineers, producers and creators from within the community. So I wanted to share a little bit about the ecosystem and how it continues to evolve. And it kind of starts, of course, with the creator, but it's a global end-to-end -end ecosystem. And I think many of your viewers are probably aware of that. Certainly most of the AES members are as well. But in the right-hand column um, is a great illustration of a lot of the progress that's been made over the past couple of years um, in terms of streaming services and getting that art out to the two and a half billion devices that are out in the marketplace today enabled for Dolby Atmos. So that's everything, of course, from speakers to mobile devices, soundbars, AVRs, uh, gaming systems, cinemas, live music venues. Yes, you can experience Dolby Atmos music live in venues now as well. And this isn't an exhaustive list. This is sort of just a sample of the partners we work with closely to help deliver the promise of creative intent throughout that ecosystem. But on the right-hand side is is a list of some of the enabled streaming services. And I wanted to illustrate this because it's global. Um, yes, of course, Amazon Music and Tidal were the first two to enable in late 2019. Apple Music, of course, in the summer of 2021. But there are many regional services delivering Dolby Atmos music globally that may be here in the States we aren't always aware of. Uh, services like Angami, Hungama, Neighbors Vibe, which are regional series uh, um, services that are available in the Middle East and in India, QQ Music in China, which is owned by Tencent, and Melon in Korea. So it's a really exciting expansion within the ecosystem for content creators, but also services and devices to be able to uh, engage and, and have a role in this amazing ecosystem. Of course, your viewers and the AES members are very familiar with the tools used to create Dolby Atmos, but I just wanted to highlight that um, just at the end of last year, Avid with 2023.12 now features native Dolby Atmos rendering. Of course, Apple Logic Pro launched in 2021 with that as well, Studio One again last year. And of course, you can use the Dolby Atmos renderer um, to power Ableton Live, for example, or other DAWs that may not have native rendering. Of course, you can use that to use the Dolby Atmos Music Panner independently and the Dolby Atmos um, Album Assembler. So all of those tools, if you're not already using them, um, the Dolby owned tools are available at Dolby.com, DolbyProfessional.com for um, a 90 day trial. So grab those if you don't have them already. And there are tons of resources out there illustrating how to use those in various ways. Um, wanted to share a bit about the studio footprint and uh, 
this is where creators are working globally. And these are not Dolby owned or operated facilities. This is also not a person just with a laptop and headphones somewhere. That's an important way for some people to get started. And it's a great way to do some QC and some work. But these are studios that we know of that meet best practices and have connected with our studio teams, which is a global team, and that also meet best practices. So we have a public list um, on our site of studios that meet best practices and have chosen to be to opt into that listing. It's not all of the studios that are out there. There are some studios that are private that are uh, part of this list that choose not to be listed. But if you have a studio or you know of a studio that would like some help with or guidance with onboarding or integration or be connected to a reseller perhaps in their area, or if you have a creative that's located somewhere that wants to do a QC or needs to be connected to a studio, you can connect with our studios team free of charge. We have a studio onboarding page at professional.dolby.com and dedicated studio teams around the world as well. So the, um, the distribution network is firmly in place, and this is great for independent creators. This is, again, not an exhaustive list of all of the distributors that are enabled, but from the most DIY self-service um, distributors such as Avid Play all the way up to the big ones like the Orchard, ADA, um, TuneCore, chances are your distributor is enabled. They have the the pipeline in place to be able to get your music to the services and if not if you're connected with the distributor or you have questions about th their enablement or they'd like to become enabled we have a dedicated operations team that can help make that happen so i just wanted to say that you know dolby from its founding is really dedicated to the creative and the independent cre creative community is near and dear to a lot of people on the music partnerships teams heart and uh, and in a wider breadth among Dolby as well. So on a major label perspective, and of course this includes indies as well, but a number that we can share that is published and is global, um, last year, 2023 year-end artists, 92% of Billboard's year-end artists were available in Dolby Atmos. So it's across all regions, it's global, it's all labels, all three of the majors, many of their subsidiaries and many independents delivering Dolby Atmos music today. Some stats around the Grammys, all record of the year, song of the year, and album of the year nominees for last year, but seven of seven best new artists and album of the year um, available in Dolby Atmos as well. And one of the most exciting ways to experience Dolby Atmos music is in the automobile. Um, we've done a couple of events with AES around uh, the states where we brought automobiles, both our concept cars and in-market cars for attendees and guests to be able to experience Dolby Atmos music in the automobile. It, Lucid was the first to announce with title implementation and the first to actually be on the road as well. Uh, Mercedes-Benz plays back through Apple Music and has Amazon Music implementation in it as well. Um, Neo, Leo, and X, uh, Li Auto and Xpeng are among four, including Yang Wang, Chinese automobile manufacturers that are on the road today. And this number, can, this um, footprint continues to grow. More and more manufacturers are coming on all the time. Uh, if you joined us at CES last year at the Dolby House, we were featuring the new Lotus Elytra with the KEF system in it, playing back through Tidal. And one of another very, very cool ways to experience Dolby Atmos is at Dolby Live, which is a 5,200 seat theater in Las Vegas on the Strip, um, featuring a fully integrated Dolby Atmos playback system. So the entire space has been designed, calibrated, and tuned by Dolby's engineers. Uh, Maroon 5 is currently in residency there. They follow Aerosmith and Usher. Um, there have been a couple of other one-off events happening there, but it's a really compelling experiment, uh, experience fully optimized for this live performance space uh, and in Atmos. So if you'd like to opt into our creative database, I'd encourage you to. We feature news, updates, events, tutorials. The Dolby Atmos Music Community session that I do monthly um, is hosted there as well. The mailing list is hosted there. If you have ideas for that session or you want to get in touch with us, or you have something cool going on out there in the world, a new studio opening, a release that's coming up, a partner that might be interested in doing something with one of our partners if they aren't already becoming one of our partners, we would love to hear from you. So I know that was the whirlwind version, but uh, that's a bit about the Dolby Atmos ecosystem.
Now, listen, um, Ben, I just want to ask you one question. Um, can you share any future developments, uh, things that are on the horizon? You can be real vague. <laughs> <laughs> I can just say, stay tuned. What I shared with you today is going to be growing tomorrow and the next day. So there are so many exciting ways that, that weren't on, on this sheet here. You know, Dolby Atmos is natively integrated within gaming systems, both Xbox and PlayStation. Um, there are podcasts now being delivered in Dolby Atmos. 80 plus OTT services delivering Dolby Atmos. You may have heard that H, uh, what's now called Max is delivering live sports in Atmos and Envision. So um, it, it just continues to grow. And what excites me the most, quite frankly, is creators using the Dolby Atmos tool set at the beginning or early on in their creative process to maybe create in an immersive environment and, you know, push the boundaries for what's possible there. That to me is the most exciting thing from a creative perspective that we're starting to see happen. That's awesome. Listen, great, great presentation. Thanks for taking the time.